What's up guys, Triple C here. I kind of want to break down the new DLC a bit, especially for all the newer players who don't have a lot of money on this game, because it is a very, very expensive DLC. Like, I've heard figures estimating from that it's up to 40 million all the content in this DLC, and be aware, not everything is released yet. The DLC was brought out and not all the content is out yet. They're gonna drip feed that in the coming, in the couple of the next couple of weeks. We're always gonna get more planes and new cars and everything. So all in all, this DLC costs more than 40 million, and the question is, is it really worth it? Because I can flat out say right off the bat, in terms of money grinding, if you're only doing this stuff to grind money, to um, to earn funds on this game, this is definitely not it. Because you're making more money with biker businesses, import-export, with the bunker, with gun running. You're definitely making much more. And one thing that a lot of people... They always look at the total earnings which they can make. Oh yeah, the bunker you can make just over a million. What's really important in these calculations basically is that you also consider the time and effort you put into it, you know? So yeah, I can sell my bunker for just over a million, but how long does that take? For me, for example, I work full time, I can only get on in the evening. I can't sell my bunker every day, you know? I can only do that every two days at most, or every three days. Whereas the biker businesses, for example, if I get on in the evening, yeah, I can only make 400 something K from the, from the Coke lab, for example, but um, I can easily sell that once a day. So if you consider this over time, also the time you put into it, um, it's really important that you consider that because that's basically the cost, the, the earnings you're making per minute or per hour or whatever metric you choose to, to define that basically. And I can tell you that this is one of the worst in the whole game. You're putting it so much time and effort and in the end you're really not getting a lot out of it. So if you're just doing it for the money and this is a big if, you know, like looking at these missions here in the background, there are some fun missions in there which also makes it worthwhile in the end. So, I mean, you can do it because you think the mission missions are fun. Um, I did it because I want to check out all the missions, but there will come a point, you know, where you've done these missions over and over again, and then all of a sudden it also becomes repetitive, like with all the other DLCs. In the beginning it's new and it's interesting, once you've done it a couple of times, then you know what to expect basically, and it's not that exciting anymore. And at latest at that point, you shouldn't do this to grind for money, because the payout per minute or per hour or per day or whatever metric, like I said before, you're going to count it in, is much, much larger with the other um, forms of earning money, like, for example, the biker stuff or import-export or uh, gun running, also not really, but definitely the biker stuff, if you do it with two people, there's some really effective methods there to do this super quick, because I, for example, I like to do this for the money only, because I enjoy custom tracks, you know, like I don't want to hang around in free mode too long, so I do it to grind for the money, but I just want to spend the least amount of time to, um, to earn that money, basically. And that's something that I can tell you, I won't be doing this in a, probably even in a week from now. I'm not going to be doing these supply runs. Right now I'm only doing them to unlock the trade prices, the discount prices of all the new airplanes, which I also got to say, it's a lot of new stuff, it's all interesting, and they all look funny and everything, you know, but in terms of fighting, for example, there's no plane that can take it up with a laser, you know, so... Um, there's nothing that can even come near to a laser in this DLC, so you also got to think, is it really worth the money, or am I just going to buy it now because it's new, fly it around for a couple of days, and then, and then what? Are you ever going to take it out your hangar again? Probably not, you know? And um, that's also a thing with all these vehicles that are still going to be released. Um, a lot, a lot of money that you're going to have to pay there. And a lot of it is just gimmicks on Rockstar's part, you know, like <clears throat> people get hyped up about this and people, if they have the money in their pocket, they easily spend it quickly because they want to see what the stuff is like, it's new, it's interesting. But in the end, like really think about it seriously if you want to spend it. And this is also for all the people that don't have modded accounts, modded money and everything, you know, if you're new to this game right now, um, it's tough to grind for that money, you know, there's so much stuff in the game, you know, and you probably, if you're starting out now, you don't even know where to begin. And for people starting out right now, 
better get with the biker business, get some, get your CEO office, get that import export rolling because you can make much more money in there and also in heists, for example, and some of the VIP work and all that. You're making much more money on that because in the end, once the hype is cooled down and once we're all used to these missions and to these new vehicles and everything, once it's not new anymore and not interesting in that sense, then basically the only benefit you have from this DLC is that you have um, low low level clearance to Fort Zancudo, you're not getting a wanted level anymore. And f for me, just that is worth it already because I've been on this game since the beginning of the game and been grinding money since the beginning of the game so I can always afford the new stuff that comes out in the new DLCs. So for me paying that, I paid 5.5 million for my bunker, it was worth it just to be able to get in Fort Zancudo, this restricted zone, it's been restricted for three and a half years has so many advantages being up there we will also be able to put our lasers in our hangars over time they will also make that available i think somebody said it was 6.5 million if i remember correctly and um, then you're gonna be able to buy the laser but you don't even have to. If you got a hangar in Fort Zancudo, you always got immediate access to lasers. There's no wanted level that will appear. You're basically protected in the military base by the army, so if people try to fuck with you and follow you in there, the army will attack them. And the second thing with the hammer, you ha uh, with the hang hammer, <laughs> with the hangar, you also have the vehicle um, mod shop basically. So you can now customize all your planes, which is cool that you can give them different colors. But also on other planes, you can also give them performance upgrades, weapon upgrades. And by the way, those performance upgrades, if you do end up in air races, which is not a big thing in this game, but if you do end up in these air races, you will have your custom planes. So that is also a very big advantage. So just for that basically. Basically. And another thing, of course, you can also always request your uh, um, your planes anywhere in the city. You know, so you don't you're not confined to the to the few drop off points with the Pegasus vehicles like it was before. And also later when we can put the laser in the hangar, um, you can just request it anywhere in the city. But <clears throat> this is also a thing we're gonna really have to see how this turns out because this could really mean that almost every lobby will have lasers in there who will blow everybody up there. It's going to be impossible to do supply runs and cell missions because you're just going to have lasers everywhere. This is a very, very big danger, you know, and that will also demotivate people. If you can't go about your business anymore without jets everywhere, uh, I don't know if they gave us too much there in that sense, you know. That can also have some real negative consequences. Time will tell. We'll have to see how it, how it all works out. But yeah, anyway, some interesting content in here. Um, the new adversary modes, which they added. We had a go at it yesterday. It's called Motor Wars, and um, you parachute down into a zone. It's like, it's a bit a rip of Pendant, where the, area, the play area always decreases. If you go out the play area, you will blow up. We had a full lobby here, um, quite a lot going on. Um, you parachute down or you skydive down, you pick up vehicles and then you try to shoot the other teams. The last team that remains in the circle will survive in the end. Um, so um, teamwork definitely um, definitely of advantage here if you're talking with the people that you're playing with. Um, but yeah, that was that, that was that was quite cool that game out actually. A lot of new cool outfits and outfit possibilities with all the flight suits and all those helmets, new masks and the scarves and everything. That's pretty neat what they all added there. I didn't even get around to checking it all out yet because there's just so much. I did start making some outfits yesterday and it just took me three or four hours. You know, people who do outfits themselves will probably can probably relate because it just you, you start doing an outfit and you're just in there for hours trying to check out all the combination and glitches and everything and definitely another thing that we're all looking forward to which i talked about yesterday in the video also the transformation races i mean this will open up a completely new set of possibilities in the creator there um, with hitting alternate checkpoints and then your vehicle transforms i mean this will probably be a big hype once it's out and you'll have a lot of races which just randomly goes around and oh i'm a dump truck oh i'm a plane oh i'm a bike but there's actually a lot of stuff that you can really work with this in an efficient way for example if you would um 
um, before it's done, quickly change to bike and back to car, then your car will be repaired. You know, you won't have that problem anymore with um, vehicle, damaged vehicles not really making the stunts anymore. Or, I mean, switching the vehicle type mid stunt and continuing as another car. A lot of possibilities there. So, we're really looking forward to that one once they do release it we did have the early access thing out and i do want to give a word of caution again to everybody because um, rockstar fucked up again and this option was available in the creator if you had races involving secondary checkpoints um, those check and secondary checkpoints made those races transformation races and people of course immediately found out and then they built their first transformation races and Rockstar doesn't want to see it, obviously, because it's not officially released yet, so Rockstar is deleting all those races. But what do they do? I mean, of course, there's not one guy sitting at a desk going through all these jobs, so they have to write some kind of algorithm, some kind of script for it. And they've just filtered all those races that had those... Um, those parameters those variables in it and as a result a lot of uh, much more people than you think got hit by this that didn't even know that they were changing their race to a transformation race they were just going in the creator and updating their race or tweaking their race and if you had secondary checkpoints all of a sudden you had these transformation physics in there probably 99 percent of the people were not even aware of that you know they updated their races and bam all deleted now um typical rockstar again and i said this yesterday at least they used their brains a bit also if it has transform in the title it's going to be deleted i was scared that all my old optimus prime races would be deleted because in the description i have autobots uh, transform in there i took a look and fortunately they're still there but who knows if they're still there tomorrow they did delete a bunch of my other races because they want to go against money glitch jobs and of course my jobs were not money glitch jobs they were legit jobs but anyways um yeah that's basically this dlc what to expect from it a lot of supercars still coming a lot of planes still coming a lot of content to be drip feeded we got the batmobile like some stupid batman kind of car with a boost yeah <laughs> so uh we're looking forward to the batmobile definitely and um for the new players um if you're new on this game if you don't have the money yet don't go for this immediately it's you're not you're going to make more money with other stuff which you can then work with to afford dlc content like this here but first go for the more efficient stuff which will net you more money and not immediately for this one here so yeah, i hope i could help you guys out and enjoyed the video and i'm out peace